action. I was watching Corey Holcomb on the Cam Newton show, and I was very excited because Cam Newton, for me, I remember he was a Superman. And I was just, he was bigger and larger than life. And then after I watched the Cam Newton situation, I was like, after I watched it, this man sitting there cross-legged and, you know what I'm saying, propped up, looking super dainty. <laughs> I just felt like, hey, man, we got to save America. Me and you personally, we have to save America because the biggest, strongest, most richest black men are not going to save America. They comfortable. And that man looked extremely comfortable. And I'm not comfortable, man. And the revolution always comes from people who are not comfortable Corey Holcomb was trying to, he was trying to throw some jabs and poke Cam in the ribs and Cam, he wasn't taking no bait. He's like, man, I got a $20 million contract from ESPN. I am not giving up my money. I'm going to say everything the Democrat, whatever the Democrats tell me to say, I'm going to say it. Whatever Disney tells me to say, I'm going to Cam say it. Cam got a uh, large contract from ESPN like that? I think that the ESPN just signed him. Oh, yeah, but yeah. you want to know something? Shout out to Corey Holcomb. Uh, he he looked like the everlasting gobstopper up there with that <laughs> stuff he had on. But it was cool, though, man. I think he had on PGZs. He was fine. But look, hey, I'm giving big ups to Corey Holcomb because Corey Holcomb is doing what we're doing here. We have the uncomfortable conversations. Now, Cam Newton said that there's not a platform out there having those discussions. No, 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 sir. We are having that conversation right here on The Greatest American Alive. We are having the uncomfortable conversations that men need to have. So I do applaud Corey Holcomb for bringing that conversation to Cam it, it, uh, so many conversations that he had that we should be having here that we've had here. So the one thing you will, I will point out. Go ahead, run it. Cam is was comfortable, but Corey Holcomb did bring in uncomfortable scenarios that forced him to answer. For instance, Go ahead. when Dr. Cheyenne Bryan was talking about how he created broken homes, I did not. We never heard Cam actually actively come out and say what was going on in his situation between the young lady Jazz and him, but I think he made it apparent and more clear in that conversation what he was talking about or what he meant as far as what their relationship is like um, and giving more definition to, you know, we think his situation with family. So I thought that was cool. We think that it's easy. Co-parenting is not easy. Having no. children, having relationships is not easy. And because these people are rich, you think money just makes everything more better, right? Hey, I have children. I have baby mamas. I understand. Hey, I'm going to ask you a question from man to man. As we talking, what are you supposed to do if a woman has your baby and says, I don't want to do this no more? Man, you stuck. What you supposed to do? You stuck in a bad place. It sucks. It sucks because also, too, you know who's going to get involved in courts. The courts are coming. They're, they're going to come dictate the visitation. They're going to dictate the finance of it all. It's very uncomfortable. And as men, we don't get to express ourselves on this, but a lot of us are dying inside behind that. It, what it, real man doesn't want to be with his kids every day? If I pray for 26 hours every single day on my knees and I just read my Bible every single day, is she finna come back with my baby? I don't know. Man, if I work really hard and I make a million dollars, is she finna come back with my baby? I don't know. And if she does come <laughs> back with my baby after I done prayed and after I done spent a million dollars or made a million dollars, then does she love me or does she love the fact that I prayed? Does she love the fact that I went and made a million dollars? Who knows? I'm just saying. I'm asking yeah, yeah, these no. questions, right? Right. Because it's not simple. It's not. And if, and if she does leave, it doesn't matter. It's my fault. I think what I take away from this, and I'm going to go back to my moral uh, standing point with this, man. I'm going to always go back to how are we setting up the relationship? It's too many baby mamas and baby daddies out here. And I think that's where a lot of this stems from. I, hey, this is not to say that marriages don't break down. Tell me, let's talk about Cam Newton. Yeah, but but I'm, I'm talking about that. Yo, you got baby mamas. You have baby mamas. You have not made one of these women your, your wife, somebody that you can actually go through the gauntlet with. You haven't done that. So you actually inserted yourself into a situation to be at their feet if something goes awry. Like you said, hey. Hey, if something goes wrong between him and that young lady and she like, y'all want to put a lawsuit on him. Yeah, he's going to have to pay it depending on what she, because really, we didn't, I didn't never heard you publicly say that the you. The market determines what I consume. The market right. determines what, and so if I'm looking at a culture and our culture of women, they choose, they they make a decision to say, I'm just looking at the election. I'm looking at the conversations. What's number one most important to women right now is reproductive rights. And that's a translation to plan A, plan B. I just want the baby to go by and talk to Jesus because I, I have everything in the world to do except for be a mother. Yeah. All right. And then when they do meet a person, when they're comfortable enough to have the baby, they're like, man, I have the baby, but the responsibility of being your wife, I don't want that. Right, it's too much for them. So I'm just so if if they if these women choose Cam and they're doing the thing, what is Cam supposed to say? I'm going to make you be my wife. You have to now. Well, I mean, 
I think I think they would if he asked him. I don't think he has to, and this leads to a point that Corey made is when you're a man of power, right, when you right. are a man of power and you have some money, some financial means. I say status. I ain't gonna say no power. Well, status. Yeah, yeah, you I have status you. and financial means. Let's yeah, leave it at that. Let's run it. You can do what you want to do with women. You can you can have your listen, they it's only a handful of us. And not all of us have the money Cam uh has, and they still it's we're still in the group. There's only a handful of us that they want to continuously have sex with, okay? So at the end of the day, what elevates you even in that group out of the handful that they want to have sex with? The more money you have, the more means and things you can supply for them selfishly that they want, you can have as many of them as Cam you want Newton. to. He I don't even think he's playing fair. Just look at him. He has he has curated himself to be the most giant peacock in the world. He has designed himself for women to find him appealing. His whole wardrobe is for women to like him. Every accessory is for women to like him. Like he has catered his life. Say, hey, women, y'all like me, huh? I mean, that's his bread and butter. But you got to call a spade a spade the same way when a woman go gets a BBL and she walks outside and she accentuates her features. That's exactly what Cam Newton is doing every time he walks out with his ankles out. <laughs> Every time he had the the joints, hey, pause, double pause. Before I say what I'm about to say, because you know what I'm saying, I can't. I'm not uh, homophobic, but I'm not supposed to be checking out another man because I'm supposed to be heterosexual. We play by different rules, right? But when he be wearing them joints that be attached to his thighs, right? This man be wearing outfits where they be painted on. Ah oh, man, okay. So he's doing the Shannon Sharp thing, man. The tight, tight fitted clothes. These gentlemen pay for tailors, okay? <laughs> you you made it that way. You had that thing specifically. He has to have help. His assistant has to help him put that bad mother sucker on. You hear me? <laughs> but it sounds like, just from Cam's commentary, it does. First off, I do want to say that I felt that that was a classic. My, pers my personal opinion was a classic episode. I think that Cam is doing a phenomenal job as an interviewer. So if he is getting a big contract, I think that he's showing on this show that he can do that. It was a phenomenal show. But let me say this about Cam. In his commentary, I do feel like he said, hey, I got the right woman. This is somebody that has worked with me through things. This is who I've been exclusive to. I've grown into exclusivity with her. And I want to say this because uh, I feel like there's a man that needs to hear this out here. I'm being honest. <laughs> Every man is not cheating or messing with multiple women because he's just some debauchery filled character. Do you know how nasty that shit sounds? What you just said, what what he said? He said they he grew into monogamy because, hey, uh, I cheated so much that she said you can cheat as much as you want. I'm still gonna love you. Then I was like, man, I hurt her feelings after I cheated on her a whole lot. That's a callous individual. That's a nasty relationship. That is the definition of toxicity. And she has so much leverage over her over his head. Because now he ha he has capitulated to her demands. He has admitted fault. And so since he admitted fault, whenever she wants to drop the gavel and say, you've already admitted guilt. And I never sentenced you. And your sentence is $30 million. So this, Give me the house. Give me the car. This give is me where the we kids. have to have a, a, a better dialogue about men and how men behave and how men should behave. So so let me back up by saying this. If you're not, if, if there's not a cultural install for monogamy in our community and why, then you're going to have, because men are aggressive sexually. So you're going to have a man that's, that's without discipline and taking on temptation. He's going to mess with several women, which by the way, I think it is normal. There's a normalcy to that. Doesn't make it right. But what I'm saying is. Why doesn't it make it right? It doesn't make it right because Bro, look I'm, at, we're, I'm an animal. Look at the result. But, but <laughs> I look at the results of something. It's like at the end of the day, we've already said this on the show. What's up? If you're having sex with a woman that you're not intending on that being your wife, you're doing her a disservice and you're a disservice. Yes, the act at first seems awesome, but this is what happens. You're in a cam situation where you got multiple baby mamas, multiple children everywhere, and somebody that can walk up and critique you on that situation. Be, and he doesn't feel whole enough. You can tell he don't feel confident enough in it because he would have never let Dr. Bryant sh sh do him like that when she don't have n no goddamn reputation of having no, no marriage, no anything, no children, nothing. And to his point. Let me tell you something. When you're not doing the right thing, you can let the wrong people call it out and they be right. That happens. So you had someone that was able to step in and point out that one thing about you out of everything they said on that show and could call it out because you're not living in something that you're confident in. If you was really living in real polygamy and you had it in a way where they were operating a certain way, he wouldn't feel bad. But the truth is this. This is coming for somebody. Hey, I didn't two, three women cheated. I'm talking about years and years and years and years of doing it. I can tell you what it causes and what happens. Man, you said polygamy, but who's thinking about terms when they're out here doing the thing? 
I ain't thinking about if I'm entertaining seven women, I ain't thinking I'm polygamous. I'm just out here because seven women like me. That's just what it is. Yeah, we out here with our information. Because once you start putting babies in these women, it changes. Once you introduce children into any sexual situation that you've had with somebody, it changes. Here's the truth. Once you have sex with somebody, I do believe this. If you are a man and you have sex with a woman, that woman really becomes your wife. That woman becomes your wife and your responsibility. If you're not looking that at it like that, there's women out here who got 300 husbands. Yeah, and they live in foul. I'm saying they live in super foul. They I live in super foul. I, like, I, where do we where do we go from there? Like, I understand what's happening and I see what's happening. Once the state starts paying for babies, whenever the state gets involved, you know, it always has to go. Once the state pays for it, then it becomes the government pays for babies. It gives her the option. She says, I don't need a family anymore because the government's going to pay for it. And so once we legislate these systems, unless you undo the, the system. And so when I said that Cam Newton is like the, the biggest black buck for the Democratic Party, then that just means that he's going to go along with the message. I wanted to make sure that I got this name right. So I've been looking it up. There's a book called Discipline Equals Freedom by Jocko Willing. He was a uh, he's a he's a fellow sailor, but he was a, a Navy SEAL. It's a great book. You you all sh it's it's a recommended read for you out of all. Anything else that we've recommended on here, I think is one of the ones you should read because discipline equals freedom without discipline as a man. I'm talking to men. I don't want to talk. We talk a lot to women as a man. If you're not operating in discipline, if you're not operating in purpose, you are living out of order. So if you are letting your temptation and your flesh and your emotions guide you, I don't think you're a man. I don't think you're operating your true masculinity yet. I don't even we shouldn't do that. I don't want to shame no man for no type of reason. We're not shaming them. Uh, you think I, you're shaming a man by saying that? Yeah, you said if you don't, if you're not disciplined or whatever, you're not no man. There's there ain't no stipulations of being no man. If you if you have a penis and testicles, you're a man. And however you decide to express yourself, man, that's that's your lived experience. The market determines how you're gonna be. You know, when you do all this discipline stuff and do this hard work stuff, here's what hard work does. It puts you in a place where most people don't exist. It puts you in a room where most people don't have the ability to do what you're doing. And so once you get into that room, you're surrounded by women who want to be around you. And so, like, you can talk about discipline, but my wife, uh, I can't, you can you can believe in something, and she has her own jealousy and her own envy. We live in a world with a whole bunch of, she's building her own, every time she looks at her phone, she has changed, she has a, a different ideology than me. Her algorithms are different than mine. And so when she goes from TikTok to Instagram to YouTube, she's being programmed to believe a thing about what I'm supposed to be doing, and it's all in conflict to what I'm actually doing. The phone is divisive, her friends are divisive, her family is divisive. And so I got all these things that are pulling away from me doing the thing. And so I'm, just, I'm from actually living this. Oh, I, yeah. Once the woman decides to do something different, she's doing something different. And when she does something different, that's baby mama number one. I'm going to do something different. I fall in love. I have the intentions on being married. I want to go to the church and, and do your family and everything like this. You tell me you're on birth control and everything is fantastic. Anyway... Sometimes that happens to some people, all right? Best friend, that happened, that that I know happened to him. Think everything is wonderful, and all of a sudden, guess what you got? You got a baby. And when they decide to do something different, they do something different. And so you say discipline equals freedom. Hey, we're playing a whole bunch of different games. You do the best you can with the opportunities that you have, and sometimes you get one, two, six, seven, twelve baby mamas. And I still believe in the institution of marriage. I still believe in family. But if Betty Sue don't want to do it, hey. Hey, let's do this. Let's lead with love. Maybe it's totally wrong. I'm not going to say maybe. I should not say that you're not a man if you're not doing this because we're catching a lot of flack and critique everywhere in the world, right? So I don't want to disrespect any of us men who have balls and a penis to say that you're less of this because you may have an area that you're not working well in. I will say you're not working at your maximum potential in your masculinity or as a man, if you're not operating in a certain space, that's going to benefit you and others. So remember, the key is it benefits you and the whole. I think when men step up and we've talked about this on the show and you're benefiting yourself and the whole, I think you're operating in a great space. Typically, our counterpart does not do that. She will do everything that will benefit her. So as a man, we step up and say, we're going to do something that benefits the whole. And we have to sometimes make sacrifices and do things that we just don't want to do. Hey, I ain't going to lie. Sometimes it feels great to have three and four or five women. That may feel great to you. But is it benefiting the whole? It's something that you have to, like, put a clamp down and say, I don't know if I need to operate in that space. Now, 
So I'm he, not saying he, you introduced Jocko, right? Yes. What is like I don't know what his foundational belief system is. Like some people, their foundational belief is Christianity. Like you if you don't have a source material, then it everything is just arbitrary, right? If you don't have a binding agreement, say, say like the, the we're bound by the constitution. That's how the America is. Most Christians, when they go to church, most of the members in the church, they bound by the Bible. Right. And depending on the church, whether it's First Baptist, Presbyterian, or whatever the church you go to, non denomination, depends on how they're going to interpret that thing. And so you might, bro, I've, I've seen, because I just know how insidious this is, my, for the majority of my life, I went to church three, four times a week. I, would, I did missionary work for like six years. I've been overseas doing missionary work. And, and I see that, I see churches get fractured based on <laughs> relationships inside the church. I see, right. I see churches get fractured based on misinterpretations. Of, I, man, I, you, know, you know what I see inside the church? What a bunch of humans! Of I see course. a bunch of people being human, I, and I and I see the power dynamic too. When right. you get a position in church, when your suit is nice, when you look nice, guess what, man? Other people's wives want to get busy. But in the same way that the discipline equals freedom, that book is calling for you to operate in a different space, which is really your character, your spirit. It's the same way that the Bible calls for you not to operate from the flesh. The Bible calls for you to do that too. I think God's word is in everything, even if it's not directly in the scripture. He's He is omnipresent. So to say, do not operate from your flesh, but operate from your spirit, which is your character, the, your, your intuition on what is right. That's what all men and women, all mankind is commanded to operate from that space. But here's the truth. Easier said than done. The tests come all the time. It's not very easy to operate from a space of great character. Sometimes, they, and I don't care who you are, it's going to come a point in your life where you make a difficult decision and may not be a great decision. But at the time, you felt like that was the best decision. And it may have been something straight off your flesh. You might say something to me, and instead of what, having a character. What drives what, men? I think women drive men. Of course. Men want women. And right now women in the market in the market that we have right now, you don't have to get married. You don't even have to date them. You don't have to call them anything. All you got to do is be kind. And that's it. And that's it. And so like there's no incentive to have character. There's no incentive to have no integrity. There's no incentive to be disciplined. It is it's on the open market. The market determined now now if we start talking about business now you have to have character and discipline because you got to show up to work because it still takes work. I thought I got lab. Work is the only flex. That's the only flex that we have as men. It's hard work to accomplish a goal. But when we start talking about women and relationships and discipline, man, all you got, all I got to do is down. I, mean, I like cheese, but cheese is fun. <laughs> you put cheese, but BLK on your phone. <laughs> and, and, and tonight, Tonight, if you know how to text, if you got any type of, if you can take a picture, you know how to text, man, goodness gracious, they going to knock on your door. The single mamas in Houston, they line up to get but knocked down. At, at some point, I, I, I can only speak for myself, right? And in hopes that this may connect to another man that's feeling how I felt. At some point, you get tired of that. At some point, you get tired of just, hey, man, me personally, if I'm not going to be with my wife, if I'm not going to have my wife, I don't want to do casual dating. I don't. I don't want to just be out here. But to poking be fair, you on the point zero one percent of people who met their wife when you when your wife was of of marriageable type of woman, right? Right now, if you're thirty years old and you're trying to meet anywhere anyone from twenty five to thirty five, they done been with twenty five to thirty five. And I don't believe that any woman's been with twenty five to thirty five is wife material. You know what it really is though. What's up? I think out of the bunch, a man can find a wife type. It's just that she's not gonna look the way he wanted her to look. What I believe. What do you mean? How, how do you mean? I believe that I, ugly, ugly ones is getting knocked down too. Yeah, ugly ones got 25, all, 35 bodies too. All of them getting knocked down. The ugly ones got the most bodies. All of them getting knocked down. <laughs> That's might be true, man. I don't know. Man, they I'm, all listen. They, they all tell get, me. I talked. I'm a, I'm the woman whisperer. This woman, I was, I'm still young. And she was like, me and my friend had a, a race to 116. They had a race to 116. But see, women, women to sell that type of behavior and mindset, then when you get with them and you're trying to get them to do it every day or get into other stuff, all of a sudden it change up. So who knows? I, sometimes I take what they say with the grain of salt. Yeah, However, yeah, that's, 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 that's variety. They're all Once doing Once you get it. the same thing, I don't want the same thing every single day. 
I think it, I think you're worth your weight in gold. If you're worth your weight in gold as a man, there is a wife for you. There is a type for you that you can have that will do what you need her to do. But I think off, more often than not, these you're women. You're saying this word. You're yeah. saying it and like uh, from your frame of reference. It sounds like a good word. When you say when you say wife, I hear witch. When you say wife, I hear bitch. When you Damn. say wife, I hear Damn. thief. When you say wife, I hear motherfucker. She gonna take my kids and embarrass my ass in court. When you say wife, I don't hear no fuck. I don't, that's not a that's not a positive term to me. The courts have made it so that when she gets ready to go, she's gone. I don't think you're alone in in how you feel. I think there's a lot of men that feel like that based on personal Her, experience. I mean, I you I've say had, feeling. This is I legislation. I have this is legislated. It's definitely legislated. I have I have these same I've had these same experiences. But the awakening is this is what I do when I look in the mirror. How much How much do I have to put? Li listen, this is real, dog. My ex wife said, "Get out of my feelings." I'm just. She said, "Get yeah. out of my feelings, nigga. Get out of my pocket. Get child support out of my life." Man, Will you do that? Hell no. What I didn't learn is in this life, God provides. If I'm serving God, God gonna make a way. A lot of times when I ain't listen to God or I did what I wanted to do, I put myself in wild positions, even with these women. If I wasn't out here cheating the way I was cheating, if I had a different mindset and mentality and I was pouring into my marriage the way I did, I wouldn't have had to go through divorce. It's a lot of things I wouldn't have had to do. It's not all they fault. And I'm just being honest. You know, I'm just you know being honest. Do you, know you, know, you know what made the church a good place to be at? What? Men. Men made the church a good place to be at. Men who like their community, men who understand that you had to have some type of uh, uh, spiritual grounding. You had to have some type of economic center. Strong men made church the dope place to be at. And now when you go to the church, the church caters to the baby mama. The church caters to the LGBTQ. The pastor probably is LGBTQ. <laughs> and so every institution that you're talking about, it has been corrupted by feminism yes. and the LGBTQ ideology. Yes. And so when you talk about the Bible, most people think about the Bible, think about a non-denominational church that has a picture of Christ and a picture of the rainbow flag right next to it. Right. So when we know that it's been co-opted, I have to do something different. I got to talk something different. I got to yep. talk hyper-masculinity. Yeah. I got to go back to when it was savage times. I don't care about your feelings. I don't care about none of this. I'm finna get mine, baby, and you better get yours because I don't ever want to compete with a woman. I'm competing with me, and I'm, man, shit. You, man, you better get out the way. Man, no, You better get the, out the, the way. The word is divisive because it's filled with truth. Men should walk in truth. So at the end of the day, everything you just said, you're totally correct. That's why we got to bring the truth back. We got to start talking. Again, that was touched on the Corey Holcomb and Cam Newton. But what is the truth? The, the truth is something that can't be changed. It's, the truth it's, it is men up. have physical force and men, women make babies. That's the truth. Women make babies and men get busy. That's the truth. So, dear women, if your priority ain't to make no baby, then everything is out of order. And so if you go to the court system and you smash the dang on child support system and you say, hey, hey, we can't tell you not to smash, but you finna stop getting paid for smashing. Should we be making these baby mamas out here like that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you think, man, God made me to make babies. Hey, we bro. might be the black Sean Hennedy. They, they, they look at they look at the world. <laughs> the whole world was designed by men saying, I'm finna, I'm finna do anything to make these babies. Men went to war and came back with a leg gone in hopes and aspirations that they would be a war hero to these women. Man, men have died for the opportunity to make a baby. And you telling me that these women will have my baby just because I'm not, because I'm me? Man, Line them up. I, Nick Cannon, Elon Musk, bro, shit. I got all my children with one lady, and I'm thankful for that. Congratulations. Because I just don't have all them. I don't have all. Not, not to say that I, hey, I really dodged some bullets, but I'm just thankful that I don't, ha I don't have to have multiple personalities to deal with in that magnitude. Um, I, I don't think that's something that we should be seeking to have. I think if men, I think with this is what I think we need to do as men because you, you we know are. Do you know why I say what I'm saying so freely? Why? Because most people can't do it. And so if I say it, I mean, you can try to do it and you're going to hurt yourself trying to do it. To thy own self be true. Man, you better know who you are and operate accordingly. Right? I, I Everybody ain't David. Right. Man, there's a whole lot of people. Man, I can't I can't tell you the names of, uh oh, damn, man, the coat of many colors. Joseph, I can't tell you the name of his brothers. I could just say Joseph, huh? You hear me? Because he was the one who was cho chosen to go be second to Pharaoh. And when you talk about good men, hey, 
powerful women came after Joseph. I'm, you know, the coat of many colors. It sounds so fantastic. We're talking about Corey Holcomb. That's a callback. <laughs> he looked like he had on the coat of many I colors. Gotta, I, like, I, I, like, goodness I, gracious. Hey, the peach Yeezys was tough, though. I cannot <laughs> lie. I was like, them peach Yeezys? All right, bro. Like, where you get them from? Like, you know what I'm saying? But, um, hey, I think the issue in America right now, especially, I'm a Christian. So when we talk about Christians is that we are not definitive enough to say this. Certain things we don't stand on. I'm I'm standing here today to say this, that you should not have sex before marriage. I'm saying that. I'm saying that marriage is only between a man and a woman. I'm saying that. I'm saying that's the only place where kids should be had. I'm saying that. It's certain things that we do not say and we are not definitive on. And until we get like that, then we'll have these loose boundaries of what you can and can't do. You should only... I've said this a ton of times on I'm, the Charm I'm, Hour. I'm, I'm, giggling. I'm giggling so hard because... That's what they looking at you like, what are you talking dog, about? Hey, I get so much. <laughs> dog, you know what? Hold on, well, you know what? Let me tell you, this is go ahead. This is the because I just need you if you have to understand the political divide in America right now. So right now, a lot of most young men are becoming very conservative and they're going back to the church. Most young women are extremely liberal and they're and they're staying away from the church because they found out. Man, they opened Pandora's box. They done found the orgasm and they're not letting it go. They didn't discover the rose and they're not letting it go. They can have a different D for however long. There's no shame. Coochie is free on the market. Do you understand? It is free. It is. And so everything, everything you talking about right now, man, hey, she's cool until she decides to do something different. I tell personal stories on the Charm Hour and here, and a lot of times it may be to the detriment of myself because we to get so intimate with your personal life can sometimes be very dangerous. But I want my life, I told God this, to be a testimony. Everything I do, I want it to be a testimony to somebody because there are things that we talk about that you can't get this intimate detail from someone. So I'm going to tell you where this all came home as I was starting to get these revelations about how we should be living. I had a conversation with my daughter. My, my daughter is of age. She's an adult. She has a boyfriend that she's been seeing. But I was always trying to tell her that she needed to wait to a certain particular time to have sex. Now, she's an adult. So I think there's, a you know, that it's her business. But the one thing she told me is, I wish you would have driven home the point more of do not have sex until you're married because of this, 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 and this, and this, and this. And that's when it becomes more prevalent. And, and when you start that, when your children are telling you, hey, I wish I would have made this decision here because this is where it makes more sense, because it's confusing outside of this arena. And that's why I've, I've said this without holding up a Bible, that if you're not having sex with your wife, you're causing a chaos. If you're not having sex with your husband, you're living in the chaos. And if you go to the Bible, it says sex outside of the bedroom of the marriage is defiled. And it's because of all the things that can come with it. So to hear my child, I've, I've had this revelation and they have my daughter say, hey, you told me the right thing. You said, wait till I was an adult. I, I, you told me to wait till I was an adult. But the, the the other part to this was, I wish you would have said this because please, it's please so complicated. Please forgive me, my brother. And of, I, and if, it, if, if it sounds like an offensive critique, uh, we don't we don't use crutches until until we hurt. When you was running fast and free, you ain't. we use the crutch when we need the crutch. Right. I hear you. I hear your testimony. I think it's a powerful testimony. Man, I don't think that to whom it is applicable to, I'm asking a person to be disciplined in, in the savage world. I'm, I'm I, like, you have your family. You have your wife. You have things to aspire to. If I tell that to a person who's 18 years old right now, and I'm, I'm just asking that man to give away half of everything that he works for, I'm just asking him to. I just sacrifice it. Just sacrifice it. You have all the hope. Hope and faith sound great, but she has government contracts to get it. And and I, that's that's a nasty game to play. And I don't want none of these people to get caught up in this nasty game. I done played the game. And and as soon as and as soon I'm not fin like when you say about personal stories, no no one likes the way that I'm talking. Because we have all these silent codes. We have all these codes. Don't say this. Don't say like to all these politics, these silent politics. I'm not politicking with nobody. I want to save lives. Because when people play the game and they don't have the information, they find themselves hanging somewhere by themselves. They find themselves with a pistol with a bullet in the chamber right. because someone told them that you could pray and it's going to be better. Right. I hear you, N nigga. It's a nasty game and they're not playing fair. 
And until men say, man, I'm going to change these, these rules so that I can have some autonomy in this society, they're not going to play fair. I agree with you, but there's a caveat here. I, I, caveat. I agree with many things that you say. Man, we got to learn how to pray in solitude without her. We got to pray to... I'm praying in solitude without her and to make the right moves because at the end of the day, and I've, I've posed this to everybody that's critiqued me about what I believe in the comments, we're still having sex. So if you don't if you don't think that this should work out a certain way, stop having sex then. Come up with an, come, come up with an alternative so you're not putting yourself in a position that can yield you bad results. I personally believe, and I just noticed from dealing with a multitude of women, you can get the right woman, you just got to wait on it. A lot of times what we do, man, it, hey, <laughs> I'm gonna get even more real. You can get with a chick. You can get with a chick, dog. And, and a lot of times, you gotta vet through not having sex with them. But that's the hardest part. You could be with a chick six months. You think it's a go. Two years later, that's when the mask come off, and now you got drama. But you know what we did in in week three and week four? We started having sex. We ain't. We're not vetting each other character wise. We're not seeing where she is spiritually. We don't come up with no real plans. I don't have no real accountability to say I could. Hey, in my kingdom, I fill the positions. It's my job to fill. She can't come in and demand no position. I can fill them positions. If I'm feeling, man, oh, I feel like I didn't dog. I don't know where this is coming from. I fill them positions. If she don't, if she, if she's not uh, to my criteria and I ain't set the criteria, it's my fault. Yeah, we hate hearing that. As a man, you hate hearing that. It's your fault. But if you're gonna be the big, if you're gonna be the big D on campus, then you gotta know what's your fault and what and what you need to be doing. So guess what? The things that I lost, it you goddamn hey, right hey, is account, my fault. I, I'm sorry, bro. I, I, no, getting, no, I'm just saying. I'm turning I, I, into I, you I, now. I, 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 <laughs> account, account, accountability with no power is like what? What are we doing? Accountability. With yeah, no power. you gotta know when. You gotta know when it's on you. Hey, man, it's a. Let what, me tell you. What, what power does any man have to tell his wife to do anything? Man, it it's, it starts from the time that Just it's please. It's, oh, I'm specifically, sorry. what power does any man have to tell his wife to do anything? Man, the power comes in her ability to follow what you tell her to do from jump, and you're and gonna see those things. No. You're gonna know if you have somebody cantankerous, and this is from personal experience. We just overlook it because we because we like other things about her. Hey, most of the women that I've dealt with that were cantankerous in the beginning, they were cantankerous in the end. They're going to be hard-headed. They're going to be cantankerous in the end unless you have some type of establishment of respect with this lady or some type of value, i.e. Cam Newton. Those values may not always be something emotional. Emotional. They may not be something so righteous, but whatever that value displacement is and value and how she see you, it's just like, go ahead. You, like, I'm, you, like, you met your wife when she had- I'm the, not even talking about her no more. I'm talking you about said oh, your personal experience. Yeah, yeah, but okay, I've been with other women though. I've been with other women. I have been with a whole bunch of other women outside of my wife that I had. Like a whole bunch. I've been with other women where it could have been something that worked out. It could have been. I have. I've had other women that I could have had a relationship with outside of her that could have went and, for the long and haul. This and these experiences have shaped your perspective on how you view marriage, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so. Like when you go through the thing, when you, when you look at the book of Ecclesiastes, which is said to be written by King Solomon, he said he did all these things that all these women had, all these concubines and all these wives. And at the end of the day, he found out it was vanity. But before he did it, he didn't know it was vanity. Right. And so for every young man go, man, you better go enjoy the world <laughs> and figure out what it is that you like. And then when you figure out what you like and you explore, then you'll be able to make decisions for yourself. All I'm saying is while you're exploring, the price of coochie is free. It's free. You don't have to have no accolades. You ain't got to be the best. You ain't got to be the most charming. Hell, you ain't even got to be able to speak well right now. And it's free. And as and until the culture changes, and I say culture, until legislation changes, there has to be, babies cost money. And if as long as the government says, I got to pay, and then they're going to pay the other half, and we're going to split, and then she gets some new dick, the system is broken. Ten million men have to come together to march to the capitals of the most powerful cities and change legislation. Because if if it's her body, her choice, it's my body, my choice. And if I didn't agree, if there is no relationship, if you can take my money, I don't want to have no, no no none of that. You can have it. You got it. So you is it really it. is it really free in the end? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Positively. Because the the woman don't control me, the government don't control me. 
the whole world, it was, it was built on men doing tough things. It was built on before we could have language. It was built on men making a decision to go and do very, very difficult things. And right now, I'm not here to negotiate power. I'm not here to placate or be moral. I'm saying, hey, if they say that men and women are equal, it's a truly egalitarian society, then I'm saying then go compete to the best of your physical ability. Go be dominant. Go conquer. Go slay any and every competitor. Because the world is yours. Because you're the greatest American alive. 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 The greatest American alive.